Hello everyone, welcome to 11th episode of optimization for FPL. Um, in this episode we will be talking about um, how to make optimization go faster essentially. Uh, we I think talked about it in past uh, just a little bit. I mentioned about some of the uh, tips that you can uh, use but uh, in this episode we will be applying those directly so that you can see how to reduce uh, that optimization time because uh, obviously especially using wildcard optimization it takes quite long so uh, if you have been trying uh, either the python or the the excel one you might have noticed that whenever we added the wildcard chip into the mix uh, things got a little bit out of hand so uh, we, uh, we will be talking about how to make it so that you don't need to, you know, spend the rest of your life in front of your PC. Um, before I start, I will uh, cover some of the changes I have made to the uh, Python repository. Let me share. This is our multi-period code, but uh, this is the model that we have been working on uh, for the wildcard optimization. And... So in this model, there have been a few changes. So I will just go over them very briefly. But before I go, there is this uh, uh, Visual Studio Code extension. Um, I have just learned today, Git Lens. Uh, I just suggest it because it makes life much easier to go over the different you know changes if you are using Git for version control. Um, so, and if I click here under source control, um, so obviously it shows all of my uh, repositories and FPL Python uh, optimization is the one that we have been uh, using. So I will just open it. And here you can see all the commits that I have pushed. And so this one at episode four file, I think this is the one that uh, I added the wildcard optimization or that was the latest episode. So if I click here and then compare, it says five files changed. And then the file I want is this one. If you click, then you will see all the differences between those two uh, versions. So in on the left side, it is the version that uh, we have pushed or we have built in the last uh, episode. And on the right side, I have the current version. Um, so I will go over very briefly, but the, the, the basic problem with the code we wrote was we were assigning free transfer to 15 and then we were trying to use those free transfers during wildcard. So if I detect that, oh, you're on wildcard, so uh, that your wildcard chip is active, so you have 15 free transfers. That's correct. Technically, yes, but there's an easier way to do it. And then here the problem was. Whenever we set free transfer to 15, inside the model, we were putting those free transfers as the last game week's number of free transfers. Because if you remember, you need to know how many free transfers you have from the previous uh, game week to determine you know, how many transfers you can uh, have this game week without paying any penalty. So. I updated it so on the right side as you see I'm saying that okay you have only one free transfer but whenever I notice that wildcard is active then I just set your use wildcard key you know this is a dictionary options is a dictionary use wildcard is equal to the game week number and then we are just breaking here because we don't need to know other chips and other stuff so I know that your wildcard is active and then I'm returning it so on the model side, we have a few changes again. So remember I mentioned free transfer. We were originally we had free transfers between one and two, and then we made it so that it changes between zero and 15, thinking about the wildcard. Um, in, in this case, we went back actually. I said lower bound is equal to one, upper bound is equal to two, because that's how free transfer work, right? works right because on wildcard the only difference is even though you don't have like you know you don't have extra free transfers it's the difference is you are not getting penalized for them so what i did is then i reversed this part and then said okay free transfer lower bound should be one upper bound should be two regardless of whether you are on wildcard free hit doesn't matter and then below here you see transfer diff 
is number of transfers minus free transfers you have. So if suppose you have one free transfer this game week and then you transfer three players, then you are taking a hit for two players, right? Two times minus four. In this case, I'm saying if you are using your wild card on game week W, then your lower bound is minus 15 times use wild card. So whatever, how many you know free transfers you have, it also takes minus 15. So the transfer difference is ne never um, negative in that case. Uh, I mean, so it's negative, but you're, you're not getting penalized. You will see that where I'm using transfer diff in a second. And on this part, uh, remember I was mentioning if, if free transfer is 15, we were accidentally setting it to the you know previous game week. So someone uh, mentioned this to me and then I fixed it and then I deleted it. Uh, as you see here, I reversed it to the original position. So essentially whatever free transfer you are getting, I'm saying that, okay, that was the free transfer last game week, not this one. And so from here, we have all these constraints and then we were adding, you know, wildcard to this free transfer. So we, we can actually determine how, what's the value for your auxiliary variable, binary variable. So I said, okay, maybe we can go back, we can revert this, and then we can only say free transfers minus you know, number of transfers here, and then use wildcard. If I add it to here, I don't need to actually uh, split this auxiliary variable constraint into two pieces. But even if this is not like 100% clear, um, so the essentially the change I'm making here is I reverted the model back and then added wildcard only to penalize transfer. So some kind of it's a simpler way to model it. And then I just noticed it when I'm, when I was trying to add this logic to, um, actually the exile solver, because in that one, obviously exile is a little bit hard to work with. So I was trying to find a, you know, shorter way to add these constraints. And I noticed, oh, wait a second. I can also do this on Python model and then did it here. And then since free transfer is back to its original form, we don't need to actually say that it's between 15, uh, like it, it's it's set to 15 if you are using wildcard because one and two are, are just default bounds. And on this case, um, so someone actually emailed me saying that, oh, I was using the uh, wildcard model, but it is giving me a diff an error while reading the solution. And if you are getting that kind of a solution, if it says that, oh, there is no um, like variable with this name, I don't exactly remember what the error message was, but that means your problem is infeasible. You can see it in the log too. Uh, CBC solver will start and then say infeasible and then just quit. And the problem on that case was whenever we use no future transfer option, remember we were saying that you cannot transfer anyone. But then again, if you are on your wild card, you should be, I mean, you should be transferring players, right? And then this constraint is, should be feasible actually. But the fact that this constraint should be active only when you're not forcing to use your wild card. So if you are trying to use your wildcard and then saying that, oh, I don't want future transfers, but I will have my wildcard on game week nine. So those are just conflicting. And then adding this if condition actually resolves that issue for us. Um, and on this part, just remove spaces here. And then on at, at the end of this line, I added number of free transfers. So you can see uh, how many transfers we are making at the summary of it. Um, and then someone also asked me about this delete underscore TMP option. That's for deleting the files we are generating during this optimization because we are exporting the problem into a file called, like it's, it, the format is called MPS. Uh, that's the format that optimization solvers understand the problem, reads the problem. Uh, we export it to MPS, CBC reads the problem, solves, finds the optimal solution. And then we generate this underscore uh, sol.txt file, which we use for reading the solution back. And after 
that, we don't really need MPS and then this file essentially. So you can delete it. So delete underscore TMP is true by default. So uh, it won't just, you know, cover some uh, space on your hard drive. If you have any issues, if you have tried the model, if you are getting invisibility or if like CBC is starting, but you are not able to get the solution somehow, uh, just you can actually, instead of this, just set delete TMP to false and then solve it again. And then you will have this MPS and then solution files. And you can send me those files and I can have a look, you know, where the solver is going wrong, you know, what kind of an uh, error you are getting. Most of the cases could, it might be related to the wildcard chip because we just added. So there it's just natural that there could be some uh, bugs in it. But anyway, so this is the latest version of this file. It should be working fine. And essentially I will actually try it here. Let me open here quickly. And then under run, uh, we have this wildcard settings, that JSON file, it shows the horizon and which game week to use the wildcard. Uh, I'm just using uh, nine here, just as an example. No feature transfer is true, randomized false, wildcard limit is one. Oh, and also, if you are using wild, use wildcard, and then if you are using wildcard limit as zero, it will also throw an invisibility error because, I mean, you cannot use your wildcard if your limit is zero, right? So if you want to disable it, you need to set wildcard limit to zero and then use wildcard value to null. If you do it this way, then use wildcard, or you can also delete this line if you want, then it won't be using wildcard and it will be just working as, as is just multi-period FPL optimization. Uh, and let me come back here. Um, under the repository, if you go to directory run, uh, let me list it so that we have the sole wildcard.py file. I will just run it. Hopefully it will work. Um, as you remember, we are just logging into FPL, getting these player prices. So if any buy price is different than the sell price, we know about it. And then we are solving the problem as you see here, goes on and on. And yeah, at the end, as you see on game week eight for this game week, essentially it's transferring two players because I have two free transfers and then I have some uh, like money. And then number of transfers is two. It's buying Salah and Armstrong and then selling Guardian Greenwood. So this is just an interesting um, squad I have here. And then on the wild card, like game week nine is essentially transferring 14 players. But as you see, like our, my free transfer is one. I'm transferring 14 players, but I'm not getting penalized for it. And then I am getting, getting all these players, uh, Jimenez, Puki, uh, like a premium goalkeeper, I see it. And then on the last game week, game week 10, essentially I have only one free transfer at the beginning of the game week. It's not transferring anyone, just rolling the uh, free transfer, but using these players essentially for my lineup. Okay, so now we covered this. So we know that wildcard optimization model is working, but if it is not working, just let me know. Um, those are very useful. I usually pin those comments under uh, YouTube videos for other people who are getting the same kind of errors. Okay, so now I covered plans, event over changes. Okay, let's talk about the solution time. So when you're solving the well optimization problem, uh, one of the things people try after getting this is just they are setting horizon to eight game weeks if they are using the premium uh, FBI review model or five game weeks if it is the free model but um, the problem is eight game weeks is, might be a little bit too much for CBC to handle in a short amount of time it might be taking around I will say like maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes depending on uh, what the composition is if you are allowing transfers for example it will certainly take long. So one suggestion is I have is if it is your first solve, just set no future transfer to true. And I know that people uh, like Sigurd wants to set this to true because he doesn't want to plan his uh, like free transfers for future. Uh, some people just hate the idea and I totally understand it. Um, that problem should go faster 
first of all, so you can see it. But someone emailed me and said that it's taking, I, th I think he was running for like six hours. That's possible, to be honest, uh, depending on your CPU and then other hardware, how much uh, RAM you have and all the other stuff. But still too long in my opinion. So uh, first of all, let's, like in this case, we are only solving it for uh, three game weeks. But let me actually import, do we have time imported here? Yeah, see, we already have it, but have not been using it. I will just put two time uh, statements before and after uh, CBC call, and then we will be able to measure actually how much it's taking. CBC also prints this value, uh, but we can also do it by ourselves. Let's find where we are calling CBC here. So values, yeah, it's over here. So. As you see here, we are first of all exporting problem into MPS file and optimization solver is able to read this file and then generate us the solution at the end. So this process over here is what we are after. So from here to here where we are waiting, I will just say that T0 is time, the time, and then T1 is time, that time, and then I will print this actually t1 minus t0 seconds past okay let's run this and see how long it takes and then I, on the wildcard setting i will just make this four so we can at least see uh, a bigger uh, solution time here i hope it runs i haven't tested this yet um so have you guys tested the wildcard optimization model? Have you uh, give it a try? How was your experience? You can let me know. Uh, because I think it was, I tried to make it pretty straightforward, but if there were any things that doesn't seem to be making sense to you or you find difficult, it could be about the installing the software, or, uh, the optimization solver, Okay, so we solved, and then this is the the time we measured. It says 24 seconds, so this will be our benchmark. And then, um, as you see here, CBC is also reporting the CPU seconds, and then, then and also the uh, wall clock seconds, which is pretty much the similar thing, the same thing. 24.40 is our benchmark. Let's see if we can reduce this time because obviously if you are solving this game, this, uh, you know, wildcard for eight game weeks, this will be a significantly bigger number. It's not increasing linearly and we will see how much we can actually reduce this. Before I go into details of tips, I need to give you just a little bit of theory about the changes we are about to make. Um, so this could be a little bit technical, but just uh, try to stay with me, uh, explain it as, as simple as possible. So this is from actually uh, from my uh, PhD program. I took this class, Integer Programming, and so this is just talking about the, the theory about the integer programming, how we are solving these problems. So essentially, if you are so trying to solve FBL optimization problem, suppose you don't have an optimization solver and you are supposed trying to just give your, give the best decisions. So you have the projections, you know, what you would do is probably you can write a for loop and then try to add top players to your list, right? So you start with Salah, for example, and then go to another premium and then another premium. And then after that, you try to find, you know, other, other mid price players and then eventually filling the remaining spots with, you know, other budget options and hoping that, you know, whatever draft you come up with is within the budget. So you can actually automate it. You, you can write a for loop and then do this. But the problem is you don't know if there is any other combination that could be better. And then in FPL, since there are like 600, over 600 players, and then you are trying to choose 15 of them, especially during wildcard, 
this is a massive solution space. So you can write all the for loops you want. It will be just too much to cover. Here, what you see is a branch and bound tree. So this is what CBC is doing under the hood. So what it's doing is it's solving the problem initially. Let me zoom in and I show you here. It's solving the problem initially. I'm finding this node over here and then just checks the solution. And then the, so in FPL, obviously we are making decisions uh, in the, in terms of like, should I buy this player or not? Right. So that we have lots of what we call binary variables. You can remember from the problem definition, whenever we have lineup scout, you know, transfer in, transfer out, all those decisions are binary. So whenever you have this, then optimization is at this point, solves the problem by relaxing integrality, but I won't go into detail. And then just think it's deciding like this, should I buy this player? or not and suppose this is the player this is one of the players in you know fbl you know set and then it decides suppose on the right side it decides to buy that player so this is exactly how you are doing it right you open just fantasy.premierleague.com and then you decide hmm for my wildcard squad i will get this player okay you are here then i will get this player then this player and then you, there's another probably a uh, premium player you're like yeah i will skip city you know midfielders <laughs> i don't want to play pep roulette and then you say you are just setting that player equal to zero essentially that binary decision you keep going you keep going like this and then eventually you find what we call a feasible solution a draft you know when people are showing you, okay, this draft I have, and I have some, you know, positive amount of budget left, that's what we call a feasible solution. So you have uh, a solution that we can actually measure and evaluate. Some of these red ones over here are just infeasible solutions, meaning that, you know, sometimes people build a draft and they are 0 0.1 budget short. That is, well, Obviously, they cannot have that team, right? That's an invisible solution. So optimization is actually going over this decision tree in a way and then deciding whether to buy or not buy certain players. So, but then, so the optimization depends on how fast you can find a good solution because after you find a good solution, optimization is able to able to just terminate some of these other nodes like suppose it's going like all over the place and then there are some other like uh, branches over here and then if we can find a really good draft that's when you have a wildcard draft so good that you are like oh i cannot change anyone in this draft so this is my wildcard is locked that's when you have a really good solution, then other branches are being terminated because the objective solution is so good, objective value is so good. Suppose you are trying to maximize your EV and your EV is so good that you don't need to actually consider all the cases where you don't buy, let's say, um, Sala, for example. So then the problem is how does CBC decide on which player to you know decide like at the beginning if you decide on whether to buy Salah or not you are essentially making a big decision right so because it's a premium player you are putting lots of money into it and then EV is so high that you will likely to get a really good solution at the end there are all kinds of algorithms like working under the hood here but here's the trick you can actually let CBC know that you have a preference. So this preference can be defined in many ways. Uh, you can actually just get the player data and then sort them by their price or maybe by their EV. Sorting by EV is good because you, since you are trying to actually maximize your EV, if you decide on you know the best players at the beginning of the tree, then you will probably, probably reach the optimal solution faster yeah so see when we are comparing candidates we need to just know you know which player to go first and then the, uh, my suggestion is just sort players by first of all by their uh, expected value so that 
optimization actually can decide on whether to buy that player or not at the beginning of the search tree. Let me go back now and then let's see how we can do it. So remember we have this prep data function over here. So we were just reading the FBL API, we were getting your players, blah, blah, and then we were reading FBI review values. Uh, just noticed that I didn't update FBI review values uh, in a bit, so this might be an old file, but anyway. Um, and when you are here, let's see. So you have this merge data, right, which we are passing here. And then let's see how we are defining these variables over here. See, we are saying model that add variables players. Well, players is coming from the merge datas index and let's go back so what's the index of merge data here as you see we are setting player ids as our index and then this merge data actually sorted by fpl ids so in a way so our merge data is just kind of an arbitrary like order it's ordered by team like arsenal players on top and then CBC is not actually following this order yet, but our, the change we will do is we will sort merge we will sort merge data by total EV, and then tell CBC that okay, this is the order I would like to start branching on. In using pandas, this is how you do it. We will use sort values, and then I will say buy, and then here we will use total EV. And then ascending will be false because we want them in descending order. Here, though, we don't have a total EV field. So, what I will do is then I will say keys is merge data. Uh, let's see, columns to list. Okay, do we have? total EV field around here, probably not, okay. I will put a debugger over here and then I will um, use the wildcard, solve wildcard for debugging. I will say start debugging, I don't have any breakpoints here so it will come and hit here. Okay. Here, let's see. So we have merge data where we are merging FPL API itself with FBI review values, right? Columns, you can see the columns here. And then you are saying that I want this, these values as a list. Okay. And then here, let's see, keys are equal to this and then keys, and then you would like to only um, you would like to only keep those values which ends with or includes underscore PTS so that we can actually uh, sum those values, right? So this should be keys equal to K if K or should write like this PTS in K for K in K in case. <laughs> case is equal to uh, K if underscore PTS in K or, okay. Oh, yeah, it should be under the for loop actually. Okay, let's print it again. As you see, it's just seven underscore PTS, eight underscore PTS. Yeah, this is from the last game, but yeah, anyway. We can, st we can still work with this. Okay, so I will just get this, put it here, okay, and then I will say this merge data total EV, or even before this, let's do this merge data, and then let's use keys here, and then use sum. Um, if you do it this way, then it's just summing up uh, all all these keys uh, separately. Can I? Give an access here. Okay, yeah. If you write, if you use keys here, I'm just filtering for those columns, and then I'm saying that you need to sum them up, and then access one, access equal to one means that you just do it uh, row by row. 
So I will use this and say that merge data total EB is equal to this. So every player then will get this total EV field. And then you can also use minutes, whatever, or just uh, something else based on maybe the price, or maybe you can uh, combine XP and uh, price. Like if a player is too expensive, but at the same time has a terrible EV, you would like to put that player to the bottom of the list, for example. You can just come up with a better idea here. And then let's run solve wildcard debugger again. And then when we hit here, I will just check who is on, on, on the top of this. Oh, forgot something. We need to also say in place is true. So that it will use the same uh, data frame to generate it. Okay, merge data location zero. Um, so this is the first row of the new uh, sorted uh, table. I will just call web name. See, Salah is at the top of the list right now. So then now we need, what we need to do is we just need to go to CDC and tell that, okay, I have my players in the order I want. Why don't you try branching on those, like deciding on those players in given order. So I will just stop this. I will come here. wherever we, we are calling CDC. So the option here is called cost and then column. So this is the only thing you need to add here. So if you do it this way, then actually CBC will follow the order of the variables. And then order of the variables are just based on which order we define them at the beginning we have we will have squad variables and then we have lineup then captain vice captain bench transfer and transfer out so you can actually change this order if you want and then see if there is a better way to you know run this um that's one thing to th th okay so this is the first tip to make cvc go faster so let's try actually if that's the case and it might not be the case, depending on the instance, because this is not uh, like a hundred percent sure method. But this is usually uh, this is usually making it go faster. Let's let's try. So wildcard. Oh, I'm on the debug. Thing. Okay. Let's see if we messed anything up. Oh, because we also have the wildcard. I'm trying to think. Yeah, hopefully it will be fine. Let's see. So when it's solving, when it says some inf, it, it means that it couldn't find a feasible solution up to that point. And then it's going best solution. Oh, 25 seconds. Okay, <laughs> it's slightly worse. Um. And so one thing I also need to mention here is this is how actually these kind of algorithms work so, so that you can understand what those logs are referring to. So when you try start solving the problem, you are here, right? So sometimes it says some inf, meaning that like there is no feasible solution found, but then eventually it finds a feasible solution so in this case, it's minimizing, but you can also think this as a maximization problem just, just to reverse it. So then suddenly it finds a good combination of like, let's say premium players. And then it suddenly jumps like this is you, like, for example, discovering that, oh, I can combine these two premium players and then get a higher EV. And then it finds another one and another one and another one. And then finally reaches optimality. And then this thing over here is called the dual problem. So there is just a whole bunch of mathematics going on here, but this is what proves us the solution we get is the optimal. So in the FPL problem, what happens is usually it finds a really good solution and then spends a long time for minor improvements. And then finally after, like in the case of six hour run, finally after hours of trying, it says that, yeah, 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 okay, this solution is optimal one. So sometimes it finds that optimal solution 
you know, after four hours, and then you spend the rest of the time just to prove the optimality of it. In some cases, you get a really good solution in a really short amount of time, but you really don't know. So you can also give a time limit to CBC. You can say that, okay, I don't want to run this more than 20 minutes because I need to go eat dinner. So this, I will show you how to do that one actually. So you can uh, give a time limit to it. So here, as you see, we are calling CBC and then we are calling, you know, MPS file cost column. Yes. And then here you can say second and then you can give a number here. Maybe we can give uh, this as a parameter. And then this will be coming from options, get. And then we can define a natural limit, maybe like 10 minutes here. And then as you see, I'm getting reading it from options, right? And then I can it to options now. So remember it was actually, let's see when it finds the, the first solution. So around 20 seconds, it already has a solution here. Trying to go back here, 13 seconds. So I will just limit this by 20 seconds. Let's see if this will work. And then if it works, then CBC will stop working under uh, after 20 seconds. And then I, I will get the solution and then the solution here is the ob with the objective 236 here and then let's see what the optimal is 237 so it will be a suboptimal solution and so it, it might not make sense to use it in a context like this because it's already it doesn't take that long but if you are solving it for eight game weeks and if you want to just finish it early this is what you can do let's try this and we should be able to see uh, the parameter when we are calling CBC here. Uh, as you see, it says seconds change from a really high number to 20 seconds. And then let's see time 13 seconds. It found a feasible solution. Okay, it stopped. Yeah, as you see, it says stopped on time limit. And then, oh, it was actually able to find the optimal solution I think we had earlier. The only difference is, as you see, the lower bound is not actually equal to this number. So there is no proof of optimality, but we have the optimal solution. So this is one trick you can try then, yeah. So if you really have a hard limit on like, I don't want this to run more than 20 minutes because my PC is getting hot. So you can just put 20 times 60 here because this is in terms of seconds. And then, so this will be just, you know, 1200, which will stop in 20 minutes, no matter what. So the only problem here is sometimes the problem is so difficult that after 20 minutes, there's a possibility that you won't have a feasible solution. Then, I mean, it's just annoying because you will be waiting for 20 minutes just to get a problem without actually, you are getting the solution, but you don't see the solution so that's just kind of annoying so in order to prevent that what you can do is you can actually run first of all cbc once and prove the feasibility of the problem so i will just do that i will run problem name problem id.mps cost column without any seconds but you will write here a ratio one ratio one means i don't Care. So one actually refers to 100% gap, meaning that the difference between lower bound and the my best solution I have can be as big as 100%, meaning that it can be anything. Like whenever you find a solution, no matter what, just stop it immediately. And then I will say soul, and then soul u is the name, right? So I will just put in it as the initial solution here. So you will run this first. You will know that when this is over, you will always have a feasible solution. And what you will do is you will come here and then give this as the initial point. MIPS is the, the option for feeding an initial solution to uh, 
CBC essentially. So here, just review what we are doing here actually. So you are running the command once to 100% gap and you are actually saying that you are just proving that the problem is feasible and then after that you are giving that you know previous solution whatever the feasible solution you have to the second solve with a time limit now so if you do it this way whenever you give a time limit you will have a solution at the end or you know you will have a proof of infeasibility but let's see if this will work fine We need to see CBC being called twice. Let's see. So the first call is here. Oh, wait. They don't. Oh, we forgot to save the file. Damn it. And since we will be first solving the problem to feasibility, so it, that will take probably 13 seconds. And then in, within 20 seconds, you will be able to find a solution, I think. Let's see. Ratio is 1. As you see here, ratio gave us change from 0 to 1. And then infeasible. And now finally, it finds a solution, 236.9, very close. And then it starts the second solve. And then as you see here, it says opening MIP start file. And then it read, reads the, you know, those values, and then actually starts from a feasible solution in this case. And let's see. So here, the second solve took only 17 seconds, and then the first solve, let's see, 13 seconds. So if you do it this way, you will all, you will know that the second solve is always, always less than you know whatever time limit you give, 20 seconds. So the total time increased a little bit to 31 seconds obviously because you are just so using it twice but this is a way to actually correctly implement a time limit and then getting a feasible solution every time you run it uh, let's see and since now that we are able to do this actually we can use a longer horizon maybe like five game weeks and then we are using wildcard on game week eight let's see so this should work fine even for five game weeks, probably also for eight game weeks, but I just don't want to test it in a live stream in case something goes wrong. Let's see. So it started solving, changed the gap to 100%. Meanwhile, let me prepare you the wildcard optimal plan for this game week. So it found a feasible solution in 20 seconds. So the second solve right now will be limited by 20 seconds. Those are those 20 seconds are separate, but yeah, as you see, it hit the time limit, and then here, so the difference is only two points uh, at most. Actually, 1.6 points actually in terms of objective score, and then you are able to get a solution like this. Um, by the way, it reminded me that we can actually add, like while this is solving the problem, we can add uh, locked players idea very quickly here. So let's see, we already have banned players, I think. Yeah, as you see, it says if banned don't have this player. So what you can do is you can also get locked players. And if you say that, if you say if locked players is not none, then at constraints and then you can say that well not lineup but squad and this doesn't need to be a sum anymore you will say that squad pw is equals equals to one or p in band players yes that's correct and for 
W in game week. So because essentially you are you are saying that whichever player's ID is inside locked, take that player and then just make sure that that player is in my squad every game week during this horizon. And then now you can go to solve wildcard, sorry, wildcard settings. And instead of here, you can add locked and then you can give something like 230, 233, which is uh, Salah's FPL ID number. And then this way, if you solve it again, it will go faster. Yep, so this is the optimal one with a 4.5 forward and son in it. Obviously you have uh, two city defenders, uh, Alexander Arnold, premium goalkeeper. Yeah, this is, so all these combinations are very close to each other in terms of objective score. With this, he made it to the 5 p.m. So, any questions? I think my webcam was moving towards the right side for some reason. Okay. Set the position. Thank you for listening. And let me go back to here. Yeah. Thank you for listening. In this episode, we covered how to make you know CBC go faster. Uh, we learned a little bit about branch and bound, branch and cut algorithm. The algorithm optim optimizers are using uh, under the hood and well knowing these kind of technical details might be an overkill for some purposes but if you are trying to make it you know faster it's i think it's a very cool uh, thing to learn if you have you know time and patience to do it um wildcard planning was wild but i'm glad it's over finally uh, i will just submit my team and then get you know be done with it uh i hope i don't use my wild card soon after game week 20 because just it was a little bit rough and i wish you luck for the next game week and with your wild card planning if you are planning wild card in future and watching this episode i mean good luck with that too um if you see any uh errors in the code if you notice something just please let me know um, even if it is something related with the you know solver not being installed, it could be a Python package problem, whatever it is, or maybe if you are using the Excel solver, you know solver is not solving or not terminating, whatever, you can let me know. And this time limit and then the gap termination criteria also exist in Open Solver in Excel, so you can play with those. With this, thank you very much, and I will see you next time.